Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. I christen the United States ship Gerald R. Ford. May God bless the ship and all who sail her. In 2013, the United States military launched its largest and most advanced aircraft carrier yet. The USS Gerald R. Ford. Though this $13 billion carrier is state of the art, it could never make it out of the shipyard without the help of tugboats. Indeed, tugboats have played an essential role in the launch, retrieval, and guidance of large vessels for more than 200 years. That's why Navy shipbuilders like Northrop Grumman in Newport News, Virginia, always have a fleet of tugs on hand. to help ships of all sizes safely navigate the shallow, obstacle-filled waters. Most large vessels are constructed in sections. To do this properly, Heavy lifting cranes must be employed to move the prefabricated sections united into place. These massive super lift cranes can lift as much as 956 tons at once. Allowing them to place huge sections of vessels into position. Most of the initial assembly process is done in a dry dock. These are man-made canals that can be flooded or drained as required. The superlift cranes move over the dry dock, carrying sections of the ship along with them. These will then be welded together by workers on the ground. A process that can take years with even the most advanced equipment. Even though the USS Gerald Ford is the largest of the United States aircraft carriers, the Nimitz-class carriers are not far behind. When building a ship more than 1,000 feet long, it's hardly surprising that construction is such time and labor intensive. Despite their powerful engines and sophisticated systems, aircraft carriers have the same vulnerability as any other big ship. That is, they cannot maneuver well at low speeds. Because they have a traditional propeller and rudder set up, the amount of water moving over the rudder is insufficient to allow them to turn and avoid obstacles when they enter and leave a port, dry dock, or other areas close to land. This is where tugboats become essential yet again. Even though aircraft carriers weigh upwards of 100,000 tons, the tug's powerful engines allow them to move the massive ships through shallow waters easily. Yet, 
using a combination of pushing and towing. The smaller vessels are able to maneuver the carriers around obstacles and into deeper waters, where they can once again move under their own power. Tugboats are able to do what they do thanks to some very unique and innovative design features. This allows them to produce an enormous amount of propulsion with comparatively little resistance. The hull is bulbous which reduces drag while increasing the buoyancy of the vessel. It's not uncommon to see a tugboat pulling a boat with the waterline just a few inches from the deck. Perhaps most important to the tugboat's ability to do its job is the powerful engines incorporated into each design. Though most modern tugs use diesel power, some are hybrid or fully electric. Some newer designs have increased their maneuverability via the addition of azimuth thrusters. These unique engine designs allow the captain to turn each propeller 360 degrees. Either way, the engines must be capable of putting out massive amounts of power in order to generate the energy to move vessels dozens of times their size safely. Tugboats perform this type of service all around the world. Towing everything from cargo ships and naval destroyers to barges. This tug is located in Jakarta, Indonesia, one of the busiest ports in Asia. It is responsible for moving large ships from the open ocean down the narrow channels for offloading and loading. Because tugboats are designed to sit low in the water, their engines are able to produce immense amounts of torque. This allows them to pull ships many times their weight. Working on a tugboat is a busy life. With crew members constantly having to handle heavy lines and ropes. There is usually only one pilot responsible for coordinating with the towed ship and other tugs. The heart of each boat is the engine room, where crew members must constantly work to maintain the powerful engines in the best possible condition. Due to the long hours, most ships also have spaces where crews can relax, eat, and sleep during their time off. Though tugboats are typically associated with surface vessels, it's not uncommon to see them assisting a submarine in moving in or out of a dry dock. Submarines can surface to the point that around a third of their hull is outside the water. However, 
Their hulls can pose a number of unique challenges for tugboats due to their smooth, hydrodynamic surface. The USS Toledo is a Los Angeles-class nuclear submarine measuring 110 feet long and 32 feet wide. Though its engines are very powerful, it too is not very maneuverable at slow speeds. In this case, an entire team of tugboats was required to move the ship in and out of the Newport News dry dock. In order to connect with the sub, the tugboats needed to lash themselves to the side and use a combination of pushing and pulling to maneuver the sub into the narrow dock. Once in position, a rope was tied to the stern of the Toledo, allowing it to be pulled directly backward. Tying the sub in place is very important as it must align with the supports at the bottom of the dock when the water is finally drained. Years before the introduction of the Los Angeles-class submarines, the Ohio-class was considered the most advanced underwater vessel in the ocean. However, as time passed, the U.S. military grew concerned that they could no longer keep up with modern weapons. This led to many of the older subs being upgraded at the Trident Refit Facility dry dock. Located at Naval Submarine Base in Kings Bay, Georgia, this 16,000-acre facility is one of the most advanced on the planet. Capable of holding up to 33 million gallons of water, it's actually the largest enclosed dry dock in the United States. At $2 billion each, Ohio-class subs are too expensive to decommission just yet. Instead, the United States military implemented this multi-billion dollar refit program to keep the vessels battle ready for another few years. When a submarine is ready for a relaunch, the dry dock is slowly flooded with seawater. As this happens, the sub assumes its natural buoyancy, leaving just the top one-third of the vessel above the waterline. The rigging on either side of the dry dock holds it in place throughout the process ensuring it doesn't move horizontally and suffer any unintended damage. Once clear of the dry dock, a team of tugboats will again move into position and begin maneuvering the submarine back out to the open sea. Though they are by no means new or advanced in any way, Tugboats are still integral to the ship building, repair, and docking process. Without these tiny, powerful vessels, it would be nearly impossible for these state-of-the-art ships to do their duty. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.